All righty, there we go. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the third part in our series for our live stream here. It's going to make sure our music is not too, too loud. We do want a little bit of uh, background ambiance for this because we are going to be completing this space shuttle launch kit. This so far has been a lot of fun. We've actually uh, built the shuttle here on the first stream and we mastered some of these little kind of hard curves to get. We also talked about how to put these engines on. Everything looks pretty good here too. The difficult part that we kind of ran into here was trying to get these wings all matched up, but overall I think they look really good and they have a really nice 3D effect. Then in part two, we went over and built these guys right here. These are our little boosters. And we know that we had a hard time getting these guys together. I mean, they weren't super difficult to actually get all the pieces in there. But of course, getting the little bits of uh, small detail here um, was a complication. But overall, these look really cool. Also, what we did with these pieces, which may not be evident just from right uh, me holding it. But if you look closely, these guys actually have magnets in them just like that so the whole thing will hopefully be able to go together with magnets and come apart with magnets which would allow us to have some pretty cool pictures okie dokie now i am still trying to work out some things with the live stream i'm going to be totally honest with you i uh will have to keep uh, looking around for the chat i'm hoping that by the next time i have this thing going we're going to have a very easy to see chat for myself so i can talk right with you guys and uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun. Also, too, I plan to do some other things during these live streams to make them a little bit more lively for everybody. Because I know that building these models, while it's really cool, if you're not building them yourself and looking for some help, it can be a little bit boring to watch. And we're going to try to change that. Now, uh, this is my coffee here. And uh, no, we're not sponsored by Nespresso, but... Uh, you know, if you wanted to sponsor us, that would be kind of cool. But uh, yeah, caramel cookie, let's go here. Ah, yes. Okay, late night building, let's commence. The first thing we're going to be doing today is starting off with part, uh, we're actually going to start with step 13 here. Uh, let me just get you guys on the right slide. Yeah, there we go. Okie dokie. So we're looking at uh, step 13 here uh, with part 35. That's this guy right here. Actually, you know what? Before we start, we got to talk about my gloves. We're going to talk about my gloves real quickly here. I know I've talked about them a couple of times here on the live stream, why I wear the gloves and all that, my ugly hands and all that kind of jazz. We work in construction, blah, 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 blah. The thing is, is that I told you guys yesterday it was a lot easier to get these gloves, and that's just not the case. That's just not the case. I, I went in there the other day, uh, or sorry, I went in there today to go grab some because I thought I had more than I did, but uh, it's actually a bunch of ugly gray ones. So I uh, went to go get them. They're all sold out, and they only have these weird grippy ones, which just don't look good on camera. So... I was really bummed out by that. I went to a couple different stores and I just like, you know, here I am eating my words, biscuits. How do I fix this? Well, uh, while I was there, I actually saw some other gloves and in my, in my day job, I actually wear gloves all the time and I wear multiple different kinds. And over the years, I use these like really cool, like high impact gel ones. And I, I kind of know what I'm talking about when it comes to gloves. Um, but these ones are super interesting. These guys, uh, you know, let's get rid of these guys here. You can already see they're breaking and uh, there's like not the greatest. I'm wondering how these ones are gonna do. Let me be honest with you. Wearing gloves, building metal models, isn't really the greatest thing. It's not necessary at all. Actually, if anything, it makes actually building them a little bit harder because you can't feel the dexterity of the pieces. Now, uh, we're gonna make these gloves even thicker and see if that impacts it at all. And uh, I think these ones are gonna look pretty cool on camera too. So give me one momento as we take our hands away from the camera and we take off our gloves. I'll give you the nice little sound there. Oh uh, yeah. And here's the other one. Okay, everyone, contain yourselves, contain yourselves. Now, we're gonna put on the, what I'm gonna call the equivalent of the gamer glove. No, not a Nintendo Power Glove. This, my friends, is a 3D metal model glove. What? What? Yeah, no, it's silly, right? It's stupid. Oh, no, my ugly hand. Uh, let me get my other one on here. Now, to be totally honest with you, I don't know if this is going to work out. I, I to, be, to be totally honest. Exactly. Glove ASMR. 
There we go, get these guys nice and strapped in. And we're just gonna do this real quickly. You know, um, when you put on gloves, any kind of work gloves, and this might sound silly, but people just put them on, they go, oh, they don't feel good. Listen, you gotta work them in first. Grab your hands, go like this, put them like this, get them in like that. Even when I wear my other gloves, my rubber ones, I um, the silicone ones, you work them in first. And that's because you got all this extra padding and things and you gotta get them in. So now that we got these gloves on, let's try to build this stuff. This should be fun. This actually might not work at all. So this piece right here is a 3D piece and it involves this kind of um, multi, well, bending this on multiple angles. Uh, let me just see how I'm gonna do this real quickly. Yes, okay, so this little center, this is the centerpiece right here. And then these guys right here are all gonna kind of fold down and around. So this one eventually, this little piece here, will be on the bottom connecting with that tab. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this started. I'm gonna use the long part of my tweezers here. I can already tell you the dexterity with these massive gloves goes right down the tubes, right down the tubes. But if I can build this model with these gloves on, it's almost like a challenge. I'll definitely probably go back to my rubber gloves at some part in the stream, because this is a weird feeling. But uh, we've made choices and we're gonna deal with it. There we go. Go back over to this side here. And uh, you know, like I said, you don't have to be perfect um, the first time you bend these. Man, I'm having a hard time. I am having a hard time. Okay, bend those down on that side there. It just takes a little bit of difference maybe. Maybe it's a way of handling the piece I need to work on be someone in the comments saying no you don't need to work on anything you just need to change your gloves you silly goose okay so what I'm doing right here is I'm just kind of working this piece in eventually my plan is to try to line up that tab and uh, get her right there let's see here Push her down a little bit. Now, I know a lot of people are out there that are saying, you know, if you just had your gloves off, you could probably rock this a lot faster. And you know what? You're right. And in the interest of time later, we might take these off. When I was in the store, I actually tried these on, and I was, like, trying to do some fine motor work with them, and they actually seemed really... Um, it seemed like they would be actually a nice little fit here. They are a little thicker, like I said, than your typical gloves. But the fact that they, uh, they're they nice and thin, they got a nice little inside padding as well, you would think that would make things a little easier. But no. No, no, no. What a song to start this nonsense. All right, children. All right, children. Do we give up as we go here or do we keep going? I, I, you know what? We got to soldier out one part. Let's soldier out one part. We might get an ugly hand session here, ladies and gentlemen. An ugly hand session. I really do need to get some little graphics to play. Sorry for the uh, shakiness of the camera as well. I'm gonna work on getting a better mount. Okay, there we go. Either side there is good to go. Now we're gonna bring in the center here. Just thinking about this too. If you're having a hard time building this and you're seeing me build this with these gloves on, you might be thinking to yourself, 
If he can build that with these gloves on, why am I having such a hard time? And if you're having a hard time with this build and you're in the same situation that I'm currently in, you know what? <laughs> I'm punishing myself, don't worry. Okay, cool, so we got that one piece bent up. Now what we need to do is actually get some other parts inserted in here, um, mostly these guys right here. Now we kind of made a box with these. We're gonna make a box with this as well. And if we determine where the center is, it actually makes things a lot easier for us to get everything bent correctly. So I know this little part right here is the center. So if I grab that and then go right to the seam and then go to the last part of this piece right here and bend that down as well, that's basically three quarters of my box bent already. And then all I have to do is just bend this part right here where our insertion hole is and bring it right over to that tab. Ooh, also a negative that I just seen is that unlike my rubber gloves where they do occasionally get caught, like the pieces get caught, the pieces of metal sometimes will get caught in them and cause them to rip, especially with the more thicker metals, um, like if we're doing time for machine or metal time, uh, those guys always tend to rip the, mo uh, rip the gloves. Same with the uh, uh, Moyo store, just because the little bits of edges and everything are everywhere. Maybe these gloves would be better for like Moyo builds be an idea. Exactly, the glove challenge. I should get some, maybe I should wear some socks on my hands and try to give it that way. Did you? Okay, this is gonna be kind of a weird moment, I'm sorry, but we're gonna all hopefully identify a little bit with each other. Um, so growing up in uh, the lovely 90s that I grew up in, I went to something that was a, uh, <laughs> it was a uh, church, uh, like a kid's like kind of vacation Bible school thing. Anyway, um, one of the things they did was they kind of had like this thing where they tried to get us to like um, understand what it would feel like to have different disabilities. And one of the things they did was they gave us um, these scissors and they gave us socks to wear over our hands. And we had to like draw pictures and cut different things using these scissors. Did anyone ever, everyone ever had to do that challenge before? I just remember trying really hard to like cut things and thinking this isn't too bad and I think I, I missed out on the whole point but you know because as a kid you see it as a challenger and like yeah I got this no worries Psh, I can lose a hand I'll throw the ball with my teeth Totally agree with the time for machine models. Totally agree with you. Nice and thick. There we go. I just want to push too much and accidentally, uh, there we go. There is a little bit of satisfaction when that uh, tab goes all the way through. I'm going to see if I can make a GIF and uh, put it up on the, or make a little meme I should say, and put it up on the uh, Instagram. See if I can get a really good shot of the uh, tab going in the insertion hole and then maybe find some other guy yelling or something silly. Because it's a good feeling when it goes in all good and it goes in easy. Come on, it's a nice completion. Um, so many jokes, so many jokes. All right, now part 38, ladies and gentlemen, part 38 is a little bit more complicated because uh, what part 38 is is some rounded edges. Will we be able to complete the rounded edges with these, wha with these whack gloves? Uh, let's see here. I actually completed uh, multiple parts now with these gloves on. Um, I'm pretty proud of myself. Okay, now let's see if we can flip this. See, the dexterity is what the problem is. When you get down to this little tiny pieces, now I would imagine if you're trying to like building something smaller than these guys, oh boy, these would not be your friend, that's for sure. <laughs> Unintentional challenge video. I love it. Forgot to mention everybody, happy Thursday. Hope your Thursday was a uh, good day today. Mine was pretty good. 
Started working in the morning time, got off early, tried to work a little bit on the uh, yield store with the 3D printers and jazz. Matilda is still being a little bit of a jerk, but we're working out our issues together. Matilda's my 3D printer, if you don't know that. We have a domestic relationship. She's a great person when she wants to be, but occasionally she really gives me the gears. I buy her nice filament, and all I hear is, you know, and then jam, 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 jam. Women, am I right? <laughs> Kidding. Oh my god. I feel like I got hit from across. I feel like I got hit from somewhere. I don't know where from, but that was weird. It was like a collective just. Whoosh. I better take a drink of my coffee here. The only good thing about this coffee is that slowly it starts out warm, which is great. But by the end of it, you're like, you know, you don't really want a warm coffee, but it turns into an iced coffee, so it all works out. Okay, now that we got all these pieces all bent and all made like this, we need to actually put them all together. Um, I was going to say combine them. Uh, let's see how we go about doing that. So first, we're going to be putting those little supports on. And it looks like, according to the instructions, we orientate the piece like this. Yes. And then we're going to take this guy is it the dual tab pieces here so the two tabs there and we're going to put them right there yeah look there's a little spot right there boom the real question is is it will he be able to actually combine the pieces together how is the uh, music mix everybody is it uh, is it okay is the music too loud is the microphone too loud? Ah, shoot a monkey. Yeah, they're grabbing every little bit of fiber possible on these gloves. Cool beans. There we go. Now, what I'm also doing here is I'm trying to make sure that I uh, put these on correctly. I'm just gonna double check. Oh, look, see? And that's why we always double check our work. So I know that the instructions on the screen are a little bit small and I'm gonna try to fix some of that in the post. I plan to do like another, the actual like Groove Builders episode a little bit later here. But you can see that this is actually not supposed to be facing this way. It's actually supposed to be facing the other way. So that's no fun. Um, I don't want to back out of my glove challenge just yet. So what I'm going to do is try to fix this because if I fix it, then I can honestly say that uh, not only did I put a piece together, but I also corrected a mistake with said gloves. Sorry for costing everybody a little bit of time here. Okay. Ta-da! Thank you, thank you there, Amanda. Appreciate it. I'll shoot a monkey. So guys, keep an eye out for a poll there on the channel a little bit later. My plan is to ask you and see your opinions. You can give them now too if you would like. Um, I'm wanting to know if you think that it would be a good idea that for some of the repeat detail, so like again, some of this stuff that's like uh, some of the bigger stuff, like so maybe like you know these guys here where I went ahead and actually did this piece here. Um, as long as I show you like the general one, 
um, would that be okay if I went ahead and just go ahead and do some of the detail that's repeat? Um, the reason why I think this is it would save some time on the stream a little bit and kind of get us to like go to more places, but um, you ultimately wouldn't see the entire build on the stream, so I can't say necessarily full build technically. Anyway, out of curiosity, just want to know your feels, if you think I should leave it all in or if you think I should cut it down a little bit, totally uh, wanting your feedback on that. I'd love to hear what you think. This is all brand new territory for Disorderly Cone, and I want to try to build something that uh, everyone would like to see. It'd be kind of fun to do that with you. Get more interaction within the community too. Okay. There we go. Bam! Now we're gonna put some uh, little, little tiny little guys on here. My son the other day, he uh, was watching me, my older son, and uh, he told me I was cringe. And so I am proud that I am now considered cringe because I feel like I've transitioned um, in age. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not that old, but uh, you know, when, you're, when you're, your kid starts looking at you like that, I feel like I think there's a, a something about a part of your life that you've transitioned into. I'm just kidding. He actually loves what I do. My son is is pretty. He, he loves what I do. He really wants to do some stuff on the channel. Both my kids do actually, and um, I just don't know how I feel about it. I did film film something with my little guy because he uh, he really wanted to do a video, and uh, I filmed a little something with him, but. I didn't actually put it up because, again, I, I, I just don't know how I feel about it. Um, you know, guys, like, again, I, I'm a, I'm a, I watch YouTube quite a bit. I'm no, uh, I'm not uh, oblivious to the people that use their children for clout and uh, Ace Family, and I don't want to be that, those people um, at all. Shoot a monkey. Yes, I'm aware that one piece did fall off too, but we're going to fix it in a moment. I think once you guys see me take off these gloves, which is going to happen in a minute, I'm not going to lie, because I, uh, I can't waste this much time on this stuff, to be totally honest. I want to get this build done today, and I know that I could build this build with these gloves on now. It makes me feel confident that, you know, I, I could do it. I could do it. Do I want to spend the time doing it, though? That is the question, and the answer is no. Unless, of course, there's just someone challenging me to do it, and then in which case I have to comply, naturally. I thought you were secure, but apparently you weren't. We're all a little camera shy once in a while, so I understand. I'll put you back in place and we'll secure you up. Okay. Now, I want you to stay in place and don't move. Good. Where's the other guy here? Here we are. This one here is rotated. Um, this guy has actually two tabs. It's one on here, uh, sorry, one on the bottom and one on the side. So what we're gonna do is just kind of try to pre-line that up a little bit um, just because, yeah, we're wearing silly gloves and that did not work at all. <laughs> Okay, we are so close. Oh man, oh man, he's falling apart in the last last moment. 
Oh no, it turned. Aha, there we go, I did it. Hooray for me. Okay, there we go. By the end of this, everyone will know why they call me Disorderly Cone. There we go. Did I do this right? I do believe so. Okay, cool. So now, these guys get bent this way, like these. And then this guy gets bent like a daze. Yes? Yes. All right, cool. I, I think I think I did okay. I might have put this on wrong, but I'm not entirely too sure. I, I can't really tell with the instructions, but we're gonna find out if that's right or wrong. Um, we are gonna need to pop the little tabs that are in there out. Um, but we're going to do that a little bit later when we go to attach everything on. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which has us going on to step 14. Put this little guy down over here. Now with step 14, we're going to be doing some interesting curls. Uh, let me take a quick little look here. Yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. So we're going to do some like nice little curls here. These cones I showed you in the first video, they're pretty easy to do consistently. Um, I did this one earlier here as well just because I got bored and... I was by my desk and I probably shouldn't have done it, but I, I did anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. And uh, <laughs> this one right here, we'll do for this video. Okay. Now, Leica is just everywhere. I can't get, she just follows me everywhere I go. So I'm gonna put these guys right here. Now, do a little turn. How we get this done? We take our little uh, tool here and we're just going to press it in. Now, the lighter you do this, the less of a bend you're gonna get. The more pressure you put into it, the more of a bend you're gonna get. Now, you'll notice this one's more of an egg shape and that's because I used a smaller ball. If you use a bigger ball, you won't have this problem. But either way, we are just getting the shaping started and then we'll go and get everything worked out when we put all our pieces together. So let's get that done first. It looks like we're doing a cone shape, and we've already done a cone shape before. We've actually done two with our boosters. And if you remember how we did that, all we're gonna do is take our little tool here. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can use a pointed pencil. Um, it works pretty good. Um, if you have a chopstick, chopsticks are pretty cool for this, especially if you put it through like a pencil sharpener and get a little nice and sharp, that works great too. Um, but what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna kind of roll this all the way around. And the important thing to remember is to keep the point uh, the same all the way around. Otherwise you won't get an equal bend, an equal shaping all the way around the part. I know I'm kind of preaching larceny here as I go around, but Trust me on this, ladies and gentlemen, it's very important to try your best to get as equal of a bend as possible to avoid that little U I got there. Now you're saying to yourself, disorderly cone, how do you fix that? Don't worry, we're gonna do it. Uh, we're gonna take our tweezers here and I'm gonna press right at the top, right at the very top. And then I'm gonna come down like that and I'm gonna bring it out like this. See, it's things like this that I would like to show people is how to fix your mistakes because mistakes happen all the time when we're building these models and sometimes people get really frustrated and really upset when they accidentally bend something out of shape and you know, this metal is actually pretty forgiving so we can, we can get through some of this stuff together, right? And it's just understanding that you gotta have a little bit of finesse and we can get everything looking nice again. So there's our connection. We've already kind of got it there. But what we're gonna do is to avoid that teardrop, we're gonna grab the seam like this and we're just gonna put a little bit of pressure starting at the top and then working our way down. I know you can't see me doing that with my tweezers, but I am alternating the pressure from the top down. And uh, if I put this just right, it should pretty much make a perfect little teepee. Look at that, look at that. I mean, I, I won't say what that I guess that looks like. We're trying to keep this a family stream. We'll put that down there. All right, let me take a little sip of my coffee here, guys. Okay, okay, we're still rocking the gloves. We're still rocking the gloves. Let's uh, let's move on here. So the next part we're gonna be doing is the smallest of our little cylinders that we've already made. 
uh, the key thing here to remember is like our other pieces, we're gonna be taking uh, these little tabs here and bending them down towards the center. And again, down towards the center here. And down towards the center. Cool. And just like that, we got everything nice and uh, set up and ready to go for the actual add-on. We're gonna grab that little teepee that we just formed or that little cone. Yes, cone. We're gonna take the little cone and we're gonna find the seam here and we're gonna try our best to match up our seams. And why are we doing that, guys? Consistency. We don't wanna see a weird seam halfway down our rocket and then have it, you know, have it plain and then have another seam on the other side. Instead, if we keep all of our seams in the same place, it looks way more uniform. Oh, and this is way, way ridiculously hard to do with these gloves on. I should have brought like a little tiny model there and just sat there with the gloves. People would have looked at me so, so strange. But if I brought my lab coat and my bow tie, I think less people would think I'm strange. Or they just think there's a strange guy with a lab coat and a bow tie trying on gloves, building in models inside. You know, there's no good scenario where that would work, so let's just forget I even mentioned it. Uh, on aisle five, there's a random man with a time machine and models building. This is way more difficult than it looks on camera, guys. I'm not lying to you right now. Just trying to get the right pressure and like trying to feel that pressure through these gloves is very interesting. But you know, I keep complaining, which I gotta stop doing, but I'm getting it done, aren't I? Now, the big thing about this is that even though you make this connection that I'm about to make right now, and you get it all nice. The key thing here, again, is to remember is that we need to grab as much of the tab in our tweezers as possible here. Um, one of the big things I see on Instagram when I'm cruising around there and I'm looking at your builds, for some people that have built this model, when they go to the back rocket, it looks like it has giant gaps in it. And I, I know I spoke about this a little bit in the last stream, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch on it here again for those that aren't watching uh, these consecutively. Um, it's super important to make sure you grab as much of the tweezers in your, or sorry, much of the tab in your tweezers as possible when you're bending these. Um, otherwise, you're left with a little bit of a gap. There's like a little ledge that will actually form if you bend just shy of where the tab is supposed to be. And that little ledge will prevent you from actually getting a nice uh, connection, one. And two, you'll have a giant gap on your part, and that doesn't look good no matter what you're doing. Now I'm just trying to fold these guys up here. You know, with spring guys being here now, we had the first day of spring a couple of days ago. I am super excited for Wing Fest. I haven't been to a Wing Fest, a Rib Fest, sorry, Rib Fest, not Wing Fest, Rib Fest, Rib Fest, Rib Fest. We do a really cool one around where I'm at and uh, we haven't had a good one in the last couple of years because of, well, you know, reasons. And uh, so I'm hoping that this year, this year will be the year that we have a really awesome time. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. Now we can move on to the next piece. This is more of the same. Um, if you're also, when you're doing this here, if you don't go right to the edge with the tweezer, if you've done that already and you're still having a hard time with defeating the gaps, sometimes little burrs can be left on your metal. And that's from where the metal pieces were attached to that little plate here. Let me see. No, I don't see a plate. Hmm. If I had one of my pieces of uh, metal here, I would show you what I mean. But there's a little bit of uh, leftover metal and sometimes on the parts. If you don't cut the piece right at that little bit, sometimes it can be a real pain in the butt to get everything to go flush. Just take a rasp or your cutters again right to that little burr and it should make everything go away though. Okay, taking our little part here again, we're gonna do the same thing. Again, we're gonna start with our edge.
if I can, again, manage to get this in here. Gah! Gah! There we go. <laughs> and here we go again. There we go. Last one right here. Bend this guy down. Again, this is probably the most important one to do right. You really want to grab as much of the tweet, uh, tab in your tweezers as possible. I don't know why I keep saying grab as much of the tweezer as possible, but um, that should be a given, I guess. <laughs> There's that guy, bend him up. This guy here, bend him up. And um, I'm gonna show you something here in a minute and you're gonna be like, larceny, disorderly cone, larceny, but don't worry, I'll show you how to fix it. Because again, that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna show you how to fix those really kind of weird things that take place when you're building these models. And uh, okay, so let me show you something. You see this right here? See how we get this like weird, like, oh no, like things aren't lining up, disorderly cone. Oh no, there's a, there's a, there's a tab that popped out on the top. Oh man. Okay. Let's just do that. Okay. Let's see if we can finesse this a little bit. This is actually really hard to do with you again. Oh, doctorization, we're doctoring the piece, and we got her in! Did we get her in? Did we get her in? I can't tell. It actually looks like, it looks like the hole here isn't full. Excuse me, team, I'm just gonna take a quick little look at this a little closer to my face, but I think that this hole is actually, it looks like, it looks like it's not complete. Oh, haha, <laughs> silly goose. Okay, so what happened there was the piece of metal actually folded over, so I couldn't put that little guy in, but now I should be able to. Come on, man, we're so close. Maybe if I push like that. Ah, shoot a monkey. Did I get it? Yeah! Oh yeah, we got her. We got her. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, see, we got her. Now we're gonna make sure we're not gonna lose her again, though. Let's uh let's verify that first. There we go, soldiers. We're good. Mm. Uh I'm not the most happy with that connection but she's not really being my friend either. So it's kind of like one of those things where you want to keep her in the DMs, but you don't want to talk too much to her. One of those things, I'm just kidding. I'm totally, totally kidding. Let's see here. Let's go right here. And there we go. What I'm doing right now is I'm going around and I'm just kind of working the part a little bit. What I'm trying to do is I want to create a uniform bend amongst all of the pieces. And this acrylic is really good for that. Uh, sorry, the nylon that I'm using is very good for that. Um, but you can also use those little metal pieces. Just know that if you're using metal, it's a little bit more harsher. Um, you also want to keep that cone. So I know it doesn't really look like I'm rolling this as much as I am, but I, I am rolling this. And that's because the tip here is a wider, or sorry, the tip is narrower than the, um, the top. So if we try to put like a, you know, a really big tool in here, you're only gonna work the bottom, see? But the smaller that we go, the further up we can work on the cone. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm working on that second area here, but I don't wanna lose the shaping. So I actually need a little miniature, or one in between, which is this guy right here. I think, yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. I can just press on this, 
press, 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 press. And because it's pretty much a perfect cylinder on top of my dapping set, it gets me a really nice, really nice little look there. A little bit more on the side there. Now, obviously where our tabs are, it's gonna pop out a little bit more and that's because those tabs prevent uh, a perfect uh, seal, if you will, on the tool, which allows for it to be perfectly bent. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to press too hard where the tabs are. Okay, now we got that one. Let's go ahead and put this third one on here. I could have gone ahead and put this one on before shaping everything, but sometimes it's nice to see where everything is. Also, too, that little tab popping out on top was an unexpected little pleasure. Have you ever been bending one of these models and had something catastrophic go wrong? I know I have a couple of times. I think the worst one, um, I, was, I think the worst one still was the, uh, was the Capitol building. It wasn't too bad, but uh, actually that's not true. Oh my goodness, that's not true. Pardon me, that was my iced coffee break. So um, the worst model that I've ever done or was actually one of my first ones and I've told the story before but I'll tell it again the first model that I ever built with uh, Metal Earth was the Normandy from Mass Effect and that's because I am a huge nerd and I love Mass Effect the original and number two number two being the best one and uh, the Mass Effect series is just such a good series and uh, I was actually going through a little bit of a hard time at the time and uh, I walked into a hobby store and I saw this there at the cashier and I was like, what man, the Normandy? I can, I can build the Normandy and like, it's a small like metal thing. Like this looks so cool. And I, I actually immediately thought of, uh, I immediately thought of like watchmakers when I was looking at this, right? Very cool stuff. And so I actually thought about the watchmakers and also growing up, I used to see like these like sterling silver uh, statues and stuff. And so, they kind of reminded me of those as a kid. So I thought that was kind of cool. And um, what I did is uh, I picked it up right there. I came home, I looked around and I found some uh, tweezers that were hanging around from a cosmetic bin. And uh, I proceeded to sit there at my table and try to bend out every single one of the pieces from the part sheet, which is the biggest no-no and biggest newbie thing you could possibly do when you enter this hobby is just sit there and try to bend all the pieces out of the metal you got to use the flush cutters which i didn't know at the time and uh so here i am you know trying to get all these pieces out and um as i'm doing that the parts are getting weaker and weaker and weaker and i'm like man like by the time i get all these pieces out i'm gonna have a really you know hard time putting this all together the funny thing about this though guys the funny part about all this is that i didn't view the kit as being broken i didn't view the kit as as being a problem i viewed it as a challenge to my skills and um, I, I thought, you know, if other people can build this, then I can build it too. And um, at the time, that little bit of reinforcement really kind of pushed me to, uh, to do some other things. And when I was done, I actually went on the subreddit on, uh, well, on Reddit, right? And um, when I was on there, I noticed everyone was posting their stuff and showing off what they were doing. And uh, I decided to post some of my stuff on there. And well, you know, after a little while, I went and built more and more and more. And eventually we are here today. So, what model did I butcher the most? I would say the Normandy, because by the end, that thing was a rickety piece of like metal. And I still have it. Um, it's actually inside my little glass cabinet that I keep to the side here. And um, I love it because it kind of shows off where I started with this place. But at the same time, I'm a silly goose. <clears throat> Excuse me, didn't mean to cough in the microphone. So. This right here is part 44 of step 14. And what we're going to be doing is putting the engraved. Now it says here to put the engraved side um, on top. So it tells me to do it like this. Um, the, and if you look at the orientation, again, I know that the, uh, the instructions are small on your screen. Um, but if you look at the orientation, it actually has these two little small uh, insertion holes. You can take a look at those and reference where those red arrows are going and you'll notice that this is the actual proper way that you're supposed to put this on. What I find interesting is they chose to keep the orange here. Um, you're not gonna see the orange uh, regardless because you're gonna have a bottom of this rocket, but I do think it's interesting that they chose to put color on the piece. 
I'm also trying to be mindful of when to start putting uh, the magnets in here too. We're not going to put it in the cone. Okay, there we go. Securing the tabs. Yeah, just bend these guys over just like that. And there we go. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? That little uh, that little guy there is still wanting to pop out, you see? That little guy is a pain in the butt. I'm disappointed with you. I wonder why that keeps happening. I thought I secured that really well this time. Hmm. I'm going to have to play with that a little bit later, I think. But right now, we're actually pretty good. We've completed step 14. We're now able to move on to step 15. Step 15 has us bending a giant cylinder. Now, um, we know from last night that these cylinders can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but today we're not going to take the uh, slow way about this. We're going to get right to her. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get right on the back grab it with my tweezers, take my tool, and we're going to crank it just like that. Crank it, and I am putting a ton of pressure on here. And uh, again, the reason for that is I don't want any hot spots on this metal at all. And we made some big decisions right there. Like we made some really big commitments um, to this size. I typically I would have started bigger and worked my way down. Um, I think it was Bob Ross that said that. We gotta make some big decisions. But well, ladies and gentlemen, we made some big decisions. Okie dokie. Put ya. Put that down. Put you over there. And now we're gonna grab this little bit of metal. Take this. And okay, I'm trying to get the base lined up properly. I know you can't maybe see that, but I am trying to get there. I could actually, and I should be using my Bender 1.0 tool for this. This would be a better way of doing this because of the fact that my hands are a little bit impeded. Um, that would actually show off the point of why it exists. And I'm still doing the same thing I was doing six seconds ago. <laughs> okay. Oh, tabernacle. Okay, there we go. Okay. Grab this guy right here, push her up a little bit, like that, yeah, there we go. All I'm doing here is going down the line, I'm trying to make sure that this is really uh, kind of straight as possible, to be honest with you. I like having my uh, little areas here straight, especially with the uh, one we did yesterday, where those ones were just so hard to get done. This one, I would like to make up for that. And we're still rocking the gloves, ladies and gentlemen. We're still rocking them. Anyone who comes back in the stream, they're going to be like, I'm going to thought that guy. But taking those off by now, that silly goose. Anyway, here we go. We got that. And now with uh, part 47 here complete, we can move on to uh, part 46, which is this little tiny black guy up here. Bend that down. All we're doing here is really creating a little box. go oh there is a poll right now everybody up on the uh, on the community channel or sorry the community tab over on the channel take a quick little second here to mention this first of all if you're liking the stream so far i know this one's a little bit different if you're liking the stream so far guys do me a giant favor press that like button that helps me with the algorithm i'm currently trying to get to 4,000 subscribers we just crossed the 3,000 subscriber line which is so cool 
Thank you guys so much out there for pressing that subscribe button. I got some really neat stuff coming up this year. Uh, some really cool 3D printed projects. I got some stuff I've been working on for quite a long time. It's just about trying to work out like uh, uh, timing issues. Like for one, I'll show you kind of something kind of neat. Um, like I said, I'm kind of working on like a 90s 3D printed special kind of a thing. And one of the things we're going to be looking at is this right here. Now, what is this? This is a wand. Hmm. What would possibly be involved with a wand? Well, something from the uh, 90s, I guess. Actually, early 2000s as well. Pretty popular TV series. I, I made that myself. Uh, total, I'm going to, of course, have all this stuff available online. Also, video game stuff. I'm working on some Jet Force Gemini models, which... You guys gotta let me know. Are you interested in seeing me actually make these designs live here like I'm doing right now with some of these models? That'd be interesting. Uh, one moment here. <coughs> Excuse me. I got uh, something in my throat here. Anyway, yeah, we got some really cool Jet Force Gemini models that I'm working on. And uh, I think that um, maybe that would be a kind of a cool thing to share with you guys. Uh, me actually trying to get these designed out and uh, made properly. Um, I think it'd be kind of a cool thing to show you guys how I, how I go through the process of coming up with some of these ideas. I do have some pretty fun ones. All I'm doing now is bringing these little tabs down. There we go. And they are in. And now I'm going to secure these tabs. Okay, just like that those are nice and secure now we're gonna put this little guy here on top uh, with this one we're actually gonna have a little bit of a faded top there that little that little canted top not the flat square part but the actual part that has a little bit of a, a little bit of a bend right there that piece is gonna go towards the top here okay so we're gonna take this I'm gonna bring my edges in a little bit more I'm gonna flip it that way There we go. And a nice little twist there as well. Cool. There we go. We got that detail kind of all on there pretty easily, I think. The next piece we're going to be working on is uh, part 48. Now, part 48 is a little tiny scrawny bit right here. It's this little orange and bull, uh, orange and silver piece here. The orange part, I think, is where we want to actually see um, on the uh, outside here. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip it like this. Um, this is the proper orientation as uh, according to that little bit of um, information that we see there on the page. See like this. Oh, okay. Oh, pardon me, just one moment, everybody. I just realized that my little playlist there ended. Just take a moment so here. My apologies about that, ladies and gentlemen. It's not nice not to have a little bit of silence as we're going on here. But it also reminds me that uh, we have actually entered the first hour of completion when it came to actually putting all this together. We should have gotten more done, but these gloves have definitely hindered that. Um, I will be taking them off uh, momentarily here so that we can move on to getting things done a little bit faster. Um, so what I'm seeing right here is that we need to actually fold this in half. That is the, that is the plan. Now, with some of these smaller pieces, um, it can be kind of hard to fold these in half correctly. Did I do that correct? It looks like I did. Um, hmm. Let me just uh, go like that. There we go. OK. 
Okay. There we go. Just trying to match it up to the picture as best I possibly can. Again, with this one, you're going right to the edge when you're bending it, so it can be kind of hard to uh, get this exact. Um, okay, now that we got this piece though done, we can grab it by the center because it's actually folded over. So we're grabbing it by one side and we're going to place it in its place. Now it looks like these go like these. And to be honest with you, I actually thought that this part here was going to be a little bit more complicated. Now I haven't put it in its place just yet, so I might eat my words, but... Okay, so I am going to eat my words a little bit. And that's because we need to actually... Uh bend this a little bit more and uh, we do have those uh, pieces already installed and I thought that we were going to add another part onto here so I'm a little bit wary about bending this too much because I know that we have this other piece right here that we're going to be installing on the other side so if we bend it too much um, we're going to have to unbend it and that would not be good. Okay, we got that side in. And now, it's just about getting the other one in. Whoa. You know what would be kind of fun to do, too? It's just thinking about this. I'm just going to start throwing things uh, wherever I like them to go, and, you know, we'll work on it. Um, what if we put some magnets in these gloves on the tips? So that way, <laughs> that way, the pieces would stay on the glove ideas whoopsie we are so close there we are okay we got her take this guy here I'm wondering if we're going to need all of these pieces because we're using magnets. That's the only the only thing. But I'm still going to go through the notions because it's important for people that are not going to be using magnets to know how to actually build this themselves. Now, yes, this looks a little bit warped, and I understand that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to unwarp it right now, and then we're going to take our tweezers, and we're going to press this together like that, just like that. And again, we're kind of alternating the way we're doing this, but look at that, see, it's all straight. You would never have known that was warped. We're good to go. Sorry about that. Okay, okay. now that we got that there, uh, we can move on to the next part, which is actually putting in this little rickety bit that we made earlier. Again, I'm just gonna start tossing things anywhere I like to toss them. Um, okay, so what we're going to be doing first is taking these tabs. I'm going to bend them down like that. Okay. Again, this way. Take that, bend it down. And um, now, before we go any further, I am going to grab those little tabs there in the center. Um, I should have done it actually before I... Uh, before I did this, but I got the tweezers to be able to grab them. If you don't have these tweezers though, I'm sorry that I took you this far and uh, didn't uh, show you to take these out because yeah, it's a pain in the butt when you get somewhere and you might not be able to get these. Um, if you're having a hard time getting these out though, um, there's a couple of ways you can get them to pop out because once you get a little bit of it you can actually work your way down like right now I use those tweezers to start it but then I'm going to use these guys here and then get right down as far as I can and I'm going to bend them up and I can do that multiple times until I get the entire tab up because again it's important to make sure that we get as much of the tab up as possible because eventually we're going to be securing something to it uh, what exactly I'm not entirely too sure um, I'm thinking though that this detail here is actually in the wrong place and if that's the case it might be in the way of some other stuff we're gonna see how uh, once we get there we'll see how it goes okay all righty now let's go ahead and put these in on this side first and then we'll work on the other side so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this side in like this flip her around make sure I'm in the right place which I am 
and then we're going to secure them up. Okay, I did not get the tab. There we go. Okay, cool. Got that one side in there. And now we're going to get the other side. I wonder how easy or how hard it's going to be for me to be able to get these in there, though. Because it looks like that lines up like that. And then... Huh. Maybe I actually should have put them on this side first and then to the other side because that would have been me reaching over the detail as of me as of right now where I'm kind of like pushing into the detail. Um, well, we learn from our mistakes. Let's take this right here and we can still get through it this way though. We can still do it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a look about where my tab needs to go. So what I did was I made an estimate of where I think this tab is going to go into that insertion hole. Same thing right here, but this one's a little easier because this one kind of already lines up. See, like I can pretty much get it in there right now, almost. The harder one is this bottom piece. So let's work on the bottom piece first. Uh, we can see how this is supposed to turn like that, right? So what we need to do is bring this like this, and we actually need to bend this tab a little bit more. So like that. Boom. See, we got it. It's just sometimes about thinking your way through some of these little puzzles. I know that wasn't incredibly difficult, um, but you know, sometimes when you initially look at something, it looks like it's gonna be more complicated than it truly is. And I might be eating my words because we still haven't gotten the top here in yet. Although I said it was quite easy uh, to do. Um, I think, Okay, so with this one, it's actually a little bit of a problem with the way that I installed this. It looks like that when I installed them down here, I may have turned both the tabs the same direction, which what that causes is the uh, the the the, P, the, blah, 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 the part to be slightly canted like this, which when you come to put something in that's like um, like a cylinder like that, um, that makes it really hard for us to be able to put things in their in their place. So again totally able to do it still but just know that uh, you can avoid that by making sure that your parts are straight and now i want to try to avoid scratching any paint that's the key here one thing too you guys may not realize is I, i'm actually used to building on the left side of my screen and the reason for that is because um, typically when I'm doing these uh, builds, um, I think about where the instructions are going to be on the screen. So the fact that I'm trying to now include the entire screen in the build and I have the ability to use the entire build surface, it's like retraining my, uh, it's like retraining myself to think that, okay, I actually have more build room than I did before and uh, I can use it. Okay, there we go. Now that is all secured. That's looking pretty sweet. Um, you know what we gotta do now though? We gotta actually turn the page, ladies and gentlemen, because now we are on the second to last page of this build. The larceny is uh, taking place. You're not supposed to see this. Ignore, you know what I'm gonna start doing? Uh, maybe start pressing the back soon button just to flip that over so you don't see it. I think that'd be silly. Let me just go back to my iced coffee here. Cool beans, all right tea. So now what we're gonna be doing is putting on the boosters onto here, but because we have magnets on them, we don't need to do that. So we're gonna wait. Um, and instead what we're going to do is we're going to put on the back now here. But typically what you would do, just so we can go through the notions of this, is you would take these little boosters and you would see these little top here and you see the bottom here. My suggestion 
would be because we're actually putting them into these little tight little holes right here what we would do is i would take my uh my guys right here press them together and then i would actually come this way and press them together so that they're nice and straight you see you really want that nice uh, you want that alignment because when you go put them into their spot if they're not aligned you're going to be playing the whole jitter jatter game and that's that's no fun um if you have tweezers like this these make your life a lot easier since you can get in there and grab the individual tab and then place them into place. So just know that when you're putting them in, you want to again, line up the tabs like this. Okay, push them together like so, and then come back over here, come back to the top, and you just really want to make sure they're as lined up as they could possibly be. You see how these ones here are up and down? That's not really any good. You're gonna, you're gonna have a little bit of a hard time there. So you can push them together and uh, Keep manipulating them a little bit, down a little bit. There we go, and that's better, see? So that's something to keep in mind. But because these now have them on there, we should be able to attach them like this. Bingo, bango, we're good to go. Um, I will still line up where the tabs go, and it will look hopefully uh, pretty good. I might bend those out of the way, make them flat so they can fit flat against the back rocket here. Um, it's not a rocket. It's a. I'm, I'm having a bit of a hard day today, so I'm not going to be able to go through all the list of things. But this is actually a giant fuel cell. That's what it contains. Just fuel. Um, a lot of people think it's a giant booster. It's fuel. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I mean, it does do boosting, but it's, it's mostly fuel. Um, okay, dokie. So now we're going to be making a dome, which is one of my favorite things to do. The domes um, are pretty easy for me to do because we have the tools to be able to do it. Let me see here. And I will be corrected. I know there's a lot of uh, space fans out there and I know that I will be corrected on anything that I say incorrect about space and rightfully so. Just trying to get my little puppy out of the way here. And here we go. So what I'm gonna do is just do a little roly poly action starting in the middle and then making bigger circles as I go all the way around. It's kind of like, uh, what's that, uh, the yoga? You start with big circles and work your, or sorry, small circles and you go bigger circles, bigger circles, bigger circles. And then we can get smaller. Now we're gonna get to a smaller little guy here. Again, do one of these scenarios, start in the center, do a small, Make sure you're doing even rotations though. Make sure they're even. And then we go all the way around and it's starting to meet. And all we're doing again is trying to make sure that every part of the metal is bent. That's the important part. Once every part of the metal is bent, we can then go back and shape it to its proper shape. Like it's gonna look a little weird right now. Um, don't worry, it's supposed to. See how that looks right now? You're like, oh, it doesn't look that great, guys. Don't worry. We still have some more to go here. Yeah, we got more to go for sure. I actually would love to know, there's some builders out there that have these blocks that come with a dapping set. I, I've been looking at getting one for a long time. I'm curious to know um, how well they work. Um, for nothing more than the fact that like to be totally honest uh, to press the piece like if I had like a little thing like this and I press it into it um, That would make a really nice shape like almost instantly the problem you run into that when you have those those blocks is If you press too hard you will actually lose the detail that's on the part especially like etch detail And that's because you're flattening it again. You're flattening that metal. That's been essentially engraved um, Just keep that in mind when you're using those tools, but that being said, you can get some really, 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 really pretty shaping on that. And uh, I'm tempted myself to take a quick little gander at getting one. Like I said, I have looked at one for a while. I just haven't done it, haven't made the commitment yet. But I am tempted to take a look at it. Much like those uh, those hoops we were talking about the other night. Those hoops look so cool. What a great find, what a great find. Uh, they're great for making cones and all they are is just ear piercing um, ex uh, extenders your hoops on the bottom of your ears. I'm not going to pretend like I know anything about that side of the world. I do not. I've never had a piercing in my life. I've wanted tattoos, to be totally honest. I haven't gotten one, though. Um, this dome is not turning out the way I wanted it to, but that's okay, because we can fix it. 
Um, what's my smaller tool here? Which smaller tool do I want to use for this, though? This might work. Okay, go right to the center there. Do a little twisty turny. Twisty turny. And now we're going to go outward. Yes, there we go. Again, I'm putting a lot of pressure on that. I feel like I didn't put enough pressure on the pedals originally, and that's what's causing me not to have the proper shaping that I want. And I'll explain why. So if you look here on the uh, on these pedals, you'll see that each one of these has a cut, right? And like I said before, if we were to go down from the top and then bend our way down, what we want to do is we want to have the pedals meet all the way down because that's how you that's how you do it. Um, but you'll notice that I have gaps in my pedals. And the reason for that is because the metal isn't properly bent on every pedal. Now I said before, it's super important to make sure that every part of the metal is bent. And this would be the reason why, is because when it comes to fixing things like this, if every part of the metal is bent, there's more give in every place. You're not gonna have any one part have a giant hot spot. Like right here, see that right there? That's because for some reason I wasn't able to get in that one spot, so the metal folded up there. It's also a part about where the mo the metal blah, 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 the metal has tension. Um, you know, as you fold these pieces down into 3D space from 2D space, uh, you're creating um, you're creating a three-dimensional object. And by doing that, by taking the pedals away here, you're taking away surface area, and these guys all have to match up correctly uh, with their pattern in order to be able to done be done correct. That was a really hard sentence for me to get out, but I tried. I tried really hard. <laughs> that sentence got away from me. Okay, this, I think, is looking better than it did before. We got a nice little dome. Again, it's just about going around, taking the time. I do feel a little bit of pressure doing the live streams because normally if I mess up, you know, I'll, I just take a deep exhale and just keep moving on. And that's what I'm doing now. But you're with me this time. So it's a little different. Okay, cool. Now we got this done here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the back rocket onto there. We're going to put this in there as well. And we're also going to put some magnets on the inside. So let's take this guy right here. go and um, what I'm trying to do is trying to again guess the other side um, I probably should have started bigger because again this was a pretty big commitment but uh, we'll see here in a moment I'm going to take my tweezers here and we're going to take these guys and we're going to bend them in Okay, there we go. Bend that down, bend that down. There we go. Excelente. Now, I'm going to start with this one side here and make sure that I'm lining this all up correctly. I'm basically looking for that big band on the top. Okay. Starting with the top here, we're going to give a nice little twist. Okay. Working our way down the list here. Again, try to remember to uh, alternate the way you're twisting these tabs. Just that way you don't have any kind of craziness that happens. I do have some magnets here on the side on standby. Just waiting to be permanently placed in here. Oh wow, I think I did a really good job estimating that uh, that size there, didn't I? Let's go ahead and just uh, take this right here. Yep, 
You know, also too, this is actually my first Metal Earth model of the year for 2022. This little space model, just for the record. I know some of you guys out there may have not have noticed that, but this is true. This is my first Metal Earth model of the year. I decided to, uh, I asked you guys last year uh, what you guys wanted to see on the channel. Some of you guys told me you guys want to see other uh, models out there. So I tried to focus a little bit on some other companies. Uh, that's why the Moyo store got to come in here. Uh, we got to see the uh, Time for Machine and Metal Time. Um, I also have, again, some other brands that are reaching out to me to work with, which I think is kind of cool. I have a really cool painting brand that wants me to take a look at a paint by number series, um, which is all done by submitting your own work. And then they give you the kit to be able to do it. It's actually a pretty cool company here in Toronto um, that is offering that. And so I'm kind of tempted to take a gander at them because they are local and uh, I always want to support local artists and local companies as well, being that uh, I'm a small local company. There we go. Still one of my favorite things I've done so far uh, since starting this channel was going out and doing that market. Um, I did a market a few weeks ago, and I know I've spoken about this already, but it's actually just one of the most fun things I've done so far. Um, going down there, actually, I don't know if I actually did speak about this on the live stream or not, but um, I will speak about it now. So, um, over the Christmas break, I got to go and do my very first pop-up with my store. And I've never had a brick and mortar place uh, with my store. It's always been online. And I've, um, if you guys remember when I started this channel, what I did was I, I didn't want to do a Patreon because I kind of felt weird. And my views on that have, have kind of changed a little bit. Um, it's still a little weird to me, the concept of being um, people like donating to a channel just because they like it. Um, I've always had the concept if you're, if you're paying for something, you need to get something. And I do this for fun, like the videos that I'm doing right now. Um, I do this because I like doing it. So to me, uh, to have a Patreon is, is kind of weird. Um, again, like I understand it. Um, I, I, I'm kind of coming around more to it now, but it's just a little odd. So having this, having the store has been a way for me to be able to support the channel um, without feeling like I'm kind of like, you know, I guess begging for money, asking for money. I don't know how to explain it. Um, but yeah, that's been the way I've kind of like neutralized it. Um, but anyway, taking my store out for the first time and actually doing a real brick and mortar or like a little setup, it was so cool. The amount of people that came out and talked to me about the, the hobby, the people that got introduced to it, the education that was taking place. I did speak about this on the stream the other night. Um, but yeah, it was it was so much fun. Uh, I mean, it was really cool to see some of you guys come out there as well. Um, there was a couple of you that I think they were trying to be facetious and were like, I don't know who you are, but I knew you knew who I was, you silly gooses trying to be like ah you what is metal earth and then like you have this little smile and i can tell that you know more than you're giving on and i love it though because uh talking trade with people especially in person is something that uh, we don't get to do as metal modelers you know there's not many places you can go and and have a chat with other modelers in our trade so to do it in person at like a show like that and see some of you guys out there very cool and um, i'm hoping in the future to do another one very soon. And when I do that, I'm gonna advertise where it is and I'm hoping that some of you will come out and say hi because I would love to see you guys in person. Give a little high five. I think it'd be really cool. Put some faces to some names. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, one thing I realized here, my, my friends here, is that, uh, see the seam? couldn't line it up no matter how hard you try it's because of where this was located so unfortunately this seam and this seam do not line up ha huh, it is what it is it is what it is all right i'm going to press a little bit more because i want this to be more cylindrical uh, on either side it actually looks pretty good um but before we close up the bottom we're going to uh, just work a little bit more on these sides there we go there we go, whoops. No clicky clicky, we're good. All right, cool. And uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, um, oh shoot a monkey, I won't be able to secure it that way. So what we're gonna have to do is actually put these towards the outside, these little guys here, put them towards the outside. 
these will be a little bit more interesting to get because of where they're located. There we go. Working my way around a rocket. Why, oh why is that rocket not going in there? I think the tab is not all the way secured down. There we go. Ah, shoot a monkey. I keep dropping things. Okay, wait a second, actually. Let me just take a quick gander on this. So according to this, actually, the three dots go toward the back like these. Yes. Yes. So they actually go like that. I was putting this on. I don't think it really matters too much, but technically I was putting it on backwards. You're not going to see this really, right? I mean, you will see them in my pictures because I plan to do... I actually have some fairy lights over here on the side. I'm going to see if I can... My plan is I see some pretty cool pictures out there of people using, like, cotton for smoke. And my plan is to see if I can work out a picture where I can get the cotton to look like smoke and then also have the engines or the boosters, sorry, uh, kind of coming off to make it look like uh, you know things are happening. I think it'd be kind of cool, like your stage is falling away. That'd be neat. Could be a cool photo. working that in there that little top piece of detail got in the way of me getting into uh, that tab let me see if I can work this a little bit being very careful not to accidentally press any of the details that I have on the top and I'm also trying not to get in the way of the details that I've secured from before that is a mighty gap there though on the front I am not a fan of that at all not much I can really do about it though. I'm wondering if I could have bent that a little bit better on the side that would have avoided that. Hmm, again, if you guys look here, the only reason why that gap exists is because this panel right here on either side is still straight. This is what I'm talking about when it comes to making sure that every part of the metal is bent. Parts that are a little bit more shaped like this, see how there's no gap right here? between here and here, the gap is basically non-existent and that's because every part of the metal on this side was formed. Where on this side, where the gap exists is because this part right here is still straight. So for me to be able to fix this, I actually have to get in here and bend that little bit of metal there and then push it in like this and then come back over here and then be very careful with this part and then kind of do this. See, like you gotta be so careful. And then you push on that like that and like that, and that's how you fix it. See, now the gap is a lot less predominant. See, we can always fix everything, guys. We can always do it. It's just a pain in the butt. <laughs> so like right here, for instance, again, similar thing. You just gotta kind of work it in, and we will get uh, we will get that to do its thing. But again, shoot a monkey. I just realized something I forgot to do, which is put the magnets inside. Oh no. That's okay. What we can do is because I think, let me just, uh, you know what, let's take this like this and see what happens. So technically, they should go like that. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, well. Yeah, perfect. It works great. And see, look. Oh, look at that. It, it blanched off. Great. Cool. All right. So now we got this done. What are we going to do? Finish up the rocket. That's what we're going to do. We're going to finish up 
this guy right here and we're going to actually put some magnets in this one uh, what we're going to do though before we do anything is we're going to put a little bit of a bend right along the edges and right here and that's because we got that really cool edging that we did earlier uh, in the first video we're going to kind of finish it up now let's just go like this I'm just making look sure I'm not missing anything in the chat there. I hope everyone's doing well. Everyone's having a good time. You guys can let me know too. Remember, if you guys are enjoying the stream, please do me a favor. Press that like button. That lets YouTube and me know that I'm doing a good job. If you don't like it, do me a favor. Press that dislike button. And that also lets me know what you're thinking. I think it's kind of cool. Um, I might start putting up the graph like some other YouTubers. You know, it's kind of neat. I got a lot of people that come into my stream that aren't subscribed that come in. Uh, same with my other YouTube video go, uh, YouTube videos. There seems to be a lot of people coming in that aren't subscribed. They come in for a couple. They stay. We got some good watch time. You guys seem to like the videos. You tend to stay for a little while, which I love. Um, but you're not subscribed. Go ahead, man. Press that little... Uh, and, uh, and ladies, go ahead and press that... Uh, little little button there that's nice and red and then uh, hit that little like button for me it really does help and again we're trying to get to that 4,000 subscriber mark um, I think it'd be a lot of fun to get there cool I think that is about what I want okay and now we're gonna do this a little bit of a bend on the top just a little bit there we go that looks really good. See? We got a nice little 3D shape there. Love it. Now we're going to go ahead and put these guys in here. Yeah, the hardest part of the entire build is trying to get these magnets off. Again, when it comes down to the little dexterity, it's really hard to do. I'm going to put that one there. I'm going to put that one there. That should, in theory, be enough. These two guys I was going to put on the other side. Um, yeah. Oh, um, real quickly, guys. Not all metal is magnetic, especially in our industry. I know that sounds very silly, but um, something to keep in mind. I know a lot of people think that. But if we look at some metals, some of it is like uh, some of it is magnetic. So like these guys here, as you can see, um, these guys are pretty magnetic. You can pick up any part and it sticks, right? But if we go to say like, uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to look around me right now. Actually, yeah, here we go. Excuse the uh, dust on this one. Uh, I'm still working on this video, by the way, but I'm super excited for it. Marvin's head just fell off there. Uh, this is the Metal Time uh, Summary. It's the actually Elusive Nautilus, a really cool model. But if you look, see this, this looks like the same, but it's made out of steel and steel is not magnetic. So something to keep in mind, same with these like little brass pieces here. Um, this stuff right here is also magnetic, or not non-magnetic. So if you ever get models that are in brass color, um, if they are actually in that kind of brass, it's not gonna be magnetic, something to keep in mind. I've actually ran into that problem a few times where I think I'm gonna be able to put magnets into something and I can't uh, because the model um, doesn't allow for it. It actually took place uh, most recently um, with the Metal Time helicopter that we did uh, that build surprised me by that uh, no addition of magneticism okay so now what I'm doing is I'm just gonna try to do the nose first so if I can get both halves on either side in yeah oh I got it in and then they came out so it starts with the nose. And if I can get the nose here done first, these two tabs, then I can pretty much just work my way down on either side. The hardest part though, is just getting these two guys here to start, and then we can work on the other sides. So. Come on this side, there we go. Okay. Okay. Make sure that the inside lines up first. That is the most important. 
and then once we get the inside first, then we can actually go through and uh, and get the wings. I can put the wings in on either side on the back end here, just because, you know, again, alignment issues on the inside might be a good idea. Just to kind of know that I'm going too far, too close, whatever. Okay, come on there. Oh, you shoot a monkey. Um, okay, you know what? Let's just do that. Let's go here. Take that. Do that. And now... Okay. I'm just actually trying right now to get the tabs into their insertion holes on the center here. Um, and uh, the reason for that is because now typically what we would be doing is attaching this black piece. I should have mentioned this before. Typically what we'd be doing is taking this black piece and attaching it onto right here, both on the top and onto the bottom, and then attaching the ship onto here. But because we're putting magnets in this and we're going to have this essentially fall away, um, I'm not doing that. This might have an effect on this model in the way that it looks. I'm going to do my best to try to line it up the best I possibly can. Um, but looking at this, it actually might be better, um, before I commit too much to closing this, to try to make sure that one magnet is as far to the nose as possible. Um, that way, it should um, have the best possible connection with the rest of the model. <coughs> Excuse me. The reason why I'm saying that is because if you look, Right here is where that connection is taking place uh, with that little bit of metal. If there's a magnet here, it would actually help a lot with that stability. Um, and it would also be attracting the other piece uh, right here, that little black spot. So that should be able to keep everything together. Uh, same with the bottom part. Um, we really want to kind of try to keep the bottom magnet as close to the uh, bottom here where those connections are going to be made. Uh, and again, that's just going to make sure that uh, everything is kosher later on down the road. Let me just put that right there and the back awesome okay now we can go back to putting this all back on go back on this side oh it's 11 o'clock ladies and gentlemen I wanted to be kind of done by now we are entering the uh, later part of the build we're almost finished um, just getting these guys here is going to be the complicated bit. The rest of this is pretty easy street. There we go. I'm just going to do that right there just to kind of help me out a little bit. Same on this side right there. Okay, now let's go ahead and get these guys. Okay, that little magnet there needs to go into the center. There we go. Now, okay. I'm trying to see the inside here the best I possibly can. There we go. I got that one side. Um, I'm going to do a small temporary bend here uh, just because that is a hard tab to get. So I don't want to lose it. But I also don't want to scratch the metal too much either. It's a, kind of a oh, shoot a monkey. Did I get I lost it anyway? Okay. Well, we're coming back on this side and we're going to try to match that one up. There we go. Okay, now if I press both of these and I try to coerce it. Uh, where are we at here? There we go. Yeah, we got her. That is not an easy, uh, not an easy one to get. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean that up with a marker, it looks like, a little bit later. 
That one is not... Not my friend. I'm gonna take a closer look at this, uh, guys. Just give me one second. You know what? It's not bad. It's not bad, actually. It's actually pretty good. Okay, cool. Uh, it, just, it just doesn't look the greatest uh, from where I was looking at it. Now, with these little side guys here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get these tabs in place. And then once the tabs are in place, we're gonna go back over with my tweezers and we're going to form them uh, correctly, okay? So that's, that's the plan is that you, you get them in first, and then after they're all in, we'll go back and we'll clean it up and make it look really pretty. Again, once we get one wing in there, we pretty much want to try to secure them. I'm trying really hard not to accidentally uh, scratch the paint here. Okay, so what I'm going to do... <laughs> Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press... There we go. Got it. And now... Okay... Busting, busting at the seams. Okay. There we go. Got her. All right. Yeah, that's looking solid. That's looking really good. That 3D effect on the wing is something that I really like. Uh, it gives it more of a pop of, of a, a little bit more of a pop look to it. Um, there is one tab here on the back that uh, we got to do here quickly. Now, I haven't been paying attention to those back engines, but you watch. I'm going to have a moment of uh, moments, and they're going to fall out, and I'm going to be very disappointed. And there we go. And now we do the same thing on this side here. We're just going to try to get all those tabs in place. Um, now, part of me realizes now that it would have been a lot easier for me to pre-bend these tabs prior to where I am right now. Um, I didn't really think about that. Uh, I was thinking more about trying to get um, the front part on, and I wasn't really thinking about the future. So... FYI, it is best to try to bend these tabs prior to where I am right now because see this tab right here like that's going to be a pain in the butt to get in there and I might have to warp the wing a little bit to, to do it so I'll get it but it's going to be a pain in the butt There's that one. That was like, look at this. It's just falling together right here. Get that. Uh, well, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Ah! Yeah, there we go. We're good. Again, throw that anywhere you like. Okay. I'm going to widen my tweezers out a little bit here to help me out.
bend that little tab down there. Bend that down. The reason why I'm bending these down is because it will uh, it will line up. Um, if I bend them down first, they will eventually line up and we will be good to go. Oh, okay, I see what's happening here. I see what's happening here. I gotta push this over to the side. And it kind of feels strange. All right, come on, you. We are right there. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. Now, this piece right here, I think I overbent this tab, so I'm going to bring it back. And then... Oh, we are so close. Okay. Okay down a little bit more oh my gosh it's right there and it's because it's a little off center that I'm having a hard time oh we got it 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 who's got it we got it yeah Let's see this go here now. Whoop. Okay. That's not good. Let's do these. And these. You're not going to stay for me, are you? I'm going to have to put more magnets on you, aren't I? Actually, no, that works. That actually works great. That, that looks fantastic. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then we can actually take these boosters... And um, what we'll do is uh, take these boosters and we will line them up where they're supposed to go, like that. Now, I do expect this to be a little bit rickety because of the fact that we are using magnets. Um, but, yeah. I still have to get it into the little hole, I guess, there. Yeah, but look at that. Look, that's awesome, guys. Look where we are. I mean, we started with flat pieces of metal, and we've worked our way into a really cool 3D metal model. Uh, the only thing we need to do now is just work on the stand, which is really easy to do. I am going to complete this tonight, guys. We're already here. I know there's somebody waiting on me. I love them very much, and I, I hope they can understand that I just want to try to get this complete. Uh, because we are so close. There's no point in making a third video where we're just doing a stand. So let's go ahead and get this done together. Um, so the first thing we're going to do here is grab part uh, 52. This is step 17. Let me make sure that we are on the... Uh... Oh, we are not on the right page. I'm so sorry, everybody. There we go. I'll fix it in post. That's a joke. There's, there's not going to be any post, ladies and gentlemen. There's not going to be any post. I'm going to try to use the, uh, the video from the live footage within the uh, Groove Builders episode and see how those transitions go. I'm going to place you just over here so you don't get caught anymore in my glove. Okay. Now when we get down to this little ledge here, you see these little bends? We're going to go like this. It's a hard bend. Okay. So hard bend and then another hard bend. Just like that. Take that. And then I'm going to take this back side here. There we go. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to attach this uh, to the bottom without too much trouble. Um, being that we're not going to be connecting it fully, I might have a bit of an issue. I'm going to try to use, uh, worst to worst, I'll just try to use a ton of magnets, um, which, will, which will do the job. Oh, I didn't realize those were on top. Okay. Let me just take this apart here quickly. Sorry about that, ma'am. Let me get you on the top there. There we go. 
on that one. And now, this guy here. Oh! Did I manage it on both? I did. Cool, that's awesome. Take that, push her in. Take that, push her in. Same thing on this side right here. Take these guys, push that in too. Last one right here. Boom, goes dynamite. Now you'll notice this little guy here, we're gonna take and push it like this, yes? No, oh no, no, it goes actually towards the inside, just like that, okay. We're gonna push this in a little bit. There we go, looking good. Next one, same thing. You can actually bend one side in like this and then actually use the, uh, the tool and do a lot of tiny bends like this. I actually slid my little uh, tweezers there, that works too. And then again, same thing. Now ultimately, or alternatively, you could use your dapping set and do that little roll like we practiced earlier. And that would be a uh, totally acceptable method to get that bent. Whatever way works for you is the best way. Okay, take that, push her down on that side, take her here, push her down on that side. There we go here, and here, there we go. Take that, bent it like that, cool. Those are our two pieces bent, and now we get to move on to our final page. That's right, guys. We're on the final page of our build. That's pretty exciting, right? Now, I know on your side, uh, that's, the, uh, that's, the, that's the, the right side of the instructions there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this big old piece that you might not be able to see. It's this guy right here. This is a big old piece of metal that we're working with. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bend down the sides. Um, you can see that we have these little guys right here. Now what I'm going to do is just grab it like this and on my table, boom. Other side, boom. Just like that. Very, very easy. Now what we're going to do here is take these little uh, side pieces like this as well. And we're going to line them up and place them in place. If I can uh, do this properly. There we go. Okay. It's going through here one by one. You know, when it comes to this part of the build, this is kind of like the cake. You know, you've you, you kind of gone through dinner, you, you built the you built the spaceship, you've gone through, you had your you had your starters, which I would say is the spaceship. You got into the main course, which is definitely those boosters and working on the, the fuel cells and rockets, and then you get in dessert. And dessert, in this case, is a really nice, fluffy cake. Very light, nothing too nutty. Especially after the heavy dinner we had, we are now rocking some pretty nice dessert here. No complaints so far. Oh, look at that. I, knew, I was wondering why that was happening. It's because I bent a uh, tab there. My music 
playlist might end here in a moment again. I did put it on repeat, but um, it was on repeat last time and it didn't do it, so um, I'm still in the middle of trying to find more tracks. I actually got another copyright. You know what? Let's talk quickly about that. So um, when it comes to YouTube, it's no surprise that uh, copyright infringement is one of the hardest things to avoid, especially ever since that Viacom lawsuit that took place a couple of years ago. Um, just real quickly, for those watching that are unfamiliar with that whole thing, what happened was is that basically people on YouTube were taking content and watching it in full. Um, and Viacom, which owns a large part of the media, was all like, yo, you guys are basically taking the paid content that we put up for people to watch and you are reusing it on your platform. And they actually went to court. There was a billion dollar lawsuit. And um, what came out of that whole thing was that basically now, you have to be very careful um, with what you put on the uh, on the old YouTube because YouTube um, will not protect you because this whole ruling basically gave them protection um, in a way that they say that you are taking on the responsibility. So myself, every time I play a song, I am taking on the legal responsibility of making sure that that song has the rights to play. Now, the thing about that is you can go and you can pay for uh, multiple different services out there that offer copyright free music. Uh, right now, I'm using um, Epidemic Sounds. Um, it's a very, everyone is pretty familiar with them. Um, it's a paid service you pay for. They have tons and tons and tons and tons of music to choose from which, I mean, not all the music is really kind of my music. Um, I, uh, I like some of the tunes on there, but it's something I would go through and just like, you know, listen to on a regular basis. Um, it's, it's just really too bad that we can't use music that I would like to use, um, even when I get permission. So um, there was actually a video a little while ago that I went and got permission from an artist that uh, I really like, which is a little stranger, love them, awesome band. And um, I went to go and I asked them, they were like, yeah, you know what? Uh, we looked at your channel, we watched some of your stuff, we really like it, which is really cool to hear, um, you know, a band that you happen to like, um, when they watch your stuff and they tell you that they like your stuff, it's a cool, uh, it's a cool feeling. Anyway, so these guys said they like my stuff, they, they like my stuff and they said I could use their music. I went to go use their music and uh, sure enough, I got a copyright strike, like very quickly. So then I went, of course, and reached back out to them, and I was like, "Hey guys, like, you know, what's going on here? You guys, you guys gave me permission." They're like, "Yeah, you're totally right." And so they reached out through their legal department, and it's been going back and forth. But the point is, is that it's not easy, even when you have permission from the artist to be able to put the music that you want to in your music videos. That's just the kind of state of YouTube right now. So when you see me going through here and finding some tracks, sometimes they're hits, sometimes they're misses. But at the end of the day, I am trying to find my best for something generic in the background. Um, let me go back to here. I do apologize. And um, again, we're all we're all working on this together, ladies and gentlemen. We're all working on this together. So let's go ahead and grab these guys here. Um, these guys are just little boxes, pretty easy to do. We fold these ones inside like this though, correct? Yeah, it looks like this. These are where the boosters are typically sitting. Why is that one not going in? It's like, uh, I wonder if these are specific to either side. I don't think they are though. Did that go in? Nope. What is the word here, my friends? Okay, I see what it is. It's just that one part on the one side is not sliding in. There we go. We got her. We got her. We got her. All right, now we're gonna take this little tab here, bend her back. Same with this side right here, bend her back. We're not bending her into the hole, we're bending her away from the hole. Um, otherwise you would see that, right? And now what we can also do is we can chuck a magnet in there a little bit later, but right now we're gonna leave it as is. We're gonna go to this little side here and we're gonna do the same thing we just did. We're gonna bend all these sides up 
Again, all I'm doing is just betting until they meet. There we go. Okay, flip that around. There we go. Okay, there we go, and flat. There is all of our little support systems placed into place. Now, all we need to do is just add on a few more things. Uh, mainly, these little tiny details right here. Now, we're gonna be doing six of these. These are pretty simple to do. All I'm doing is gonna go through here and bend all of the edges, just like so. Grab this guy right here and box one. Do the same thing with the other ones here. Again, grab it. I typically have to grab from uh, one side that I'm gonna designate as like the, the middle, if you will. And then we'll go with this. Cool. Two. Okay. There we go. That's three. And this is what comes back to when I'm talking about repeat detail. I, I'm really curious if this is something you guys would like for me to do like once and then be done with it, or if this is something you guys would like to see uh, the whole way through. I, I really do want to hear feedback on that. Um, I know sometimes you know you bend one or two pieces and then after you do that sometimes you get to the third one and for some reason that one's a little bit different than the other ones and I have skipped those before in the past and I didn't realize it um, what ends up happening is that sometimes when I'm making these videos um, these videos it's like it's like it's like making the model like four or five times because I'll make the model I film the model and then I'm editing all of the individual clips together and so by doing that, I'm also kind of like building it again. And then I go through it again after that with the audio. It's, it's a lot of, of post-processing. And anyone who's ever tried to do a YouTube video with metal models knows exactly what I'm talking about. And um, a lot of post-processing to be involved. And uh, again, I just want to make sure that when I'm doing the work, that I'm not uh, doing too little or doing not enough. Okay, now these little plates here, one side, you'll notice, um, they have very similar sides. Um, my goodness, if I can hold on to a piece. So you'll notice that this side here has a little post. On the other side, it's, uh, it has another, like it has the same kind of similar tabs, but they're not the same. They are actually are further apart. So if you can't put them in on the one side, but on this side here, they should fit perfectly. Just like that. Okay, there's one. There's two. Let's get this going, huh? Whoopsie. Okay. Grabbing these little bits of detail. 
You know, these little tiny details that uh, really do make the model. I think one of my favorite ones that I've ever done that had a ton of detail was actually the Y-Wing that Metal Earth has. Uh, Zora's Y-Wing. That thing, or Zora, I think it's Zora's Y-Wing. Um, that Y-Wing is super impressive because of all the little bits of detail that we get to play with and, and form and shape. Um, you know, sometimes when you're building these models, um, the detail can be very tedious. I personally did not find that with the Y-Wing. I found it super enjoyable. And um, I'm not entirely too sure as to why, because some of those are very tiny pieces that you're dealing with on that. I think actually, I would like to ask Middle Earth that. What, what is their smallest, um, what model contains their smallest part? What do you think? Do you think of a model off the top of your head that had a really small, small piece that you had to put together? I think, again, my smallest one, I'm going to say, has to be um, has to be the Y-Wing. But I would love to know yours. Put it in the comments down below. I wish I would stop dropping all these pieces. Butterfinger BBs over here, even with grip gloves. See, it says grip. The lie. I should send the makers of these gloves this video and be like, what do you say to this nonsense? They'd be like, you're an idiot for trying to uh, build a model with these little gloves on, you silly goose. All right, here we go. Just uh, lining that up there. Okay. That is a bit ridiculous. <laughs> I got like the, the jittery fingers here of doom. Yeah, there we go. One in. Okay. Just get in here like this. Ah! Why are you being like that, you pain in the butt? Oh, it's because it was crooked. Oh, well, this is falling apart now. Okay, let's correct these little guys here. And... And yes, uh, for the people that are wondering, I am trying just to go ahead and YOLO this with the gloves on. I really do feel like I could have completed this way faster with the detail that I had to do today. I mean, the detail wasn't overly complicated, but what's making it complicated is these gloves. These don't have the dexterity. See? Boom, I did it again. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay, there's two. That one was a bit of a fight, but we got her in there, didn't we? Okay, there we go. There's that guy. in my butt but there you go whoa no 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 that's no good there we go Is that better 
Why is it still wiggly? Interesting. Okay. I'm going to grab the next one here. That is not a good... That is not good. I don't like the wiggliness of that one. Okay. There we go. Cool. There's the fourth one. I would really like some uh, more coffee, unfortunately. It looks like I have ran out, which is no bueno. I've actually been looking at trying to take um, a little bit more of a healthier approach to things. Um, so there is this stuff that I got to have when I was in Mexico. It's uh, called cacao, which is, I know a lot of people already know what it is, but if you don't know what it is, it's basically a, uh, it's like the raw cocoa uh, chocolate bean, if you will. And um, I got to try some that was roasted. Now, typically it's super bitter, but as somebody who absolutely loves coffee and espresso and everything else, I loved it. It was so good. It was good, 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 good stuff. And um, now when I was there, I bought a little bag of it and um, I used it as like a snack in and around the resort and on the way home. The, um, the problem is when you get back to here, um, the world is a little bit more expensive in terms of, you know, your chocolate and things. So you can't necessarily get that. Now, the other day I did take a gander on the... Uh, on the uh, Amazon there and I did locate some so I'm gonna try to get my hands on that and try it out and see if it's any good but I think if you combine that with uh, some of your coffee I'm pretty sure it would be like a really good mocha but at the same time it's like super good for you too right like the uh, antioxidants and stuff in there or at least apparently I, I, I don't know I'm not I'm not a doctor never claimed to be never never went that way um, let me take a look at this here now and put these two little fronts here that's what I've heard allegedly you know you read everything these days on the internet though one day you'll read that the uh, eating chalk will help you. <clears throat> How those Tide Pods go, people? Okay. Wow, there we go. This is perfect music for this uh, current state I'm in right now. We're trying to get this complete. It's almost like it's like uh, sneaky, sneaky, super concentration music. <laughs> okay. Now, we have just placed on our final piece here guys this builders this is our last piece let me just uh, do my best here to make sure this is connected well because we don't want to have anything fall off okay there we go we have this I don't like that I don't like the way this is movie movie I'm gonna have to correct that and I'm going to go through here it looks like and close up some of these squares they don't look like they're completely closed which that will drive me nuts um so i'm gonna have to go through here with some detail tweezers and just kind of kind of clean them up a little bit but for the most part i think that actually looks really good so now what we need to do is see if we can get our rocket in place so um here's our rocket so let's see if we can um get this to do its thing okay you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this so flipping this guy upside down and then taking some of those magnets that I got from earlier I'm gonna put the magnet in here like that I'm also gonna put a magnet on this side and um, it looks like the bigger booster is going to go down there. So I'm going to put one right here as well. I 
think possibly it might be better actually to put it near the back. But we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Okay. So there we go. Like that. Rockets. Okay. Now keep in mind these are all held in place by magnets, right? So it's not uh, necessary. And we're not going to secure it down to the base here either. Because by doing that... Um, it wouldn't be ready to go. Now, does this sit... Where does this sit? This sits halfway down. Okay. So let me turn... Whoopsie! Yeah, okay, it's not going to be the most sturdiest of things. So i got to figure that out. And... You know what I can do though, is I can actually just go ahead and insert these pieces into their insertion holes like they're supposed to be. And because they're magnetized, they should hold. And because I'm only gonna be taking these out for really like pictures and stuff, it should be okay. I mean, in theory, I could actually take away the uh, the uh, insertion holes or the tabs that are here, because it's not necessary to even have them um, because they'll, they'll sit flush. Okay, now we're gonna grab this guy here. <laughs> Just throw that anywhere you like. Butterfinger BBs. Okay, now yes, you're seeing me being very delicate though this now. Goodness. Groovers. We did it. We did it. We did it, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. We made the Space Shuttle Launch Kit from the Metal Earth Premium Series. We started out with flat pieces of metal. We went slowly. We started with, we went our way out to the shuttle. Then we went to the boosters. Where today, we went up with the big boosters and put it all together with our stand. And what a piece. Yes, everything does come apart as we've seen here before, but my goodness, this model looks great. And if you have a bender tool at home, like all good metal modelers do, this is about the size. A pretty, uh, pretty hefty little model and, and very interesting too. Um, I gotta say, the detail looks really good. And I, I like the fact that we have this little 3D thing going on here. Uh, the bummers that I would say from my personal uh, my, my personal review so far, and again, we're going to go through this um, off camera, and I'm going to go and tidy up everything so it won't look exactly like this um, on the Instagram when I actually take the pictures, but um, some things that I don't like about this right now is that this could have been formed. My, my, my boosters here on the side, I think, got a little bit squished as I was dealing with them, so... That is something, in my opinion, that I could have done maybe a little bit better. The top here, I could have focused on where it met, right here, a little bit more. I could have rounded that there and would have had a better completion. Now, moving our way down here um, towards the wing section, I really like how we have that 3D effect. But when um, going back up here, sorry, to this little cockpit area where we have the Endeavor logo, um, while I think it does look good that you can change those nameplates, changing nameplates is a little bit uh, silly because um, it kind of it kind of looks crooked no matter how you do it. Like even to come in here with my tweezers and try to manipulate that, because of how these pieces are connected, it's always going to be a little bit off. Now, when I turn this, it's going to be a little bit uh, slanted. And the reason for that, again, is because we are using magnets to hold this in place. But I'm just trying to give you an idea of what the uh, overall model looks like. Did I forget some other part here? I think I did. Um, oh, oh my goodness, I did forget a piece. I'm sorry, Groovers. So we actually have one more part here uh, to actually put on. I thought we were done. I lie like the rug, and it looks like I need to get my nippers back out here. 
because uh, this is the centerpiece here. Okay. Oh, actually, that's a. Uh, I just realized something, Groovers. My apologies here. No, nope, we're okay. Actually, it's all right. Just one little piece here on the back. Um, it looks like there's a little disc there, but I unfortunately don't have that little sheet with me. So what I'll do, is I'll just show you what I'm gonna do here. This little bit right here, this little guy goes right on the back, but I have to have one of these cylindrical discs, which I just don't have right now. But I'm gonna call this build complete we had a really great time or i should say i had a really great time building with all of you being able to chat with you in the live chat there uh, being able to take some of your suggestions in the prior videos as well if you're watching this afterwards and you've been building with this Mimi uh, and you've been building this with me I hope you've enjoyed watching this and been able to find all the things you've been able to uh, that you've been needed to uh, get this complete and if I missed anything if there's anything you need a little bit more clarification on don't feel any kind of hesitation go ahead and place it in the comments down below I do my best to get back to everybody in the timely manner um, sometimes I'm just may not see your comment right away it's a little bit of the YouTube being a little bit silly but overall again I really enjoyed this model and I can't wait to review the whole thing with you guys in a future date all right that's it for me tonight I hope you guys had a good time and until next time groovers keep building